Hello everyone, this is the part 2 of my video on how to conduct and interpret the results of one-way ANOVA using SPSS. As promised, today we're going to cover how to report the results in APA format. If you haven't watched the first part of my ANOVA video using SPSS, I do recommend that you visit that video first before watching this one in order for you to easily understand the context behind my example. Okay, so just a quick recap, and if you want more details about the, the data and the results of the, of the analysis, you can visit the first video, but just a quick recap. In this, in this problem, we tried to compare, we tried to compare the different study strategies, and in this experiment, there are three types of study, uh, study strategies that were employed. In the first condition, we have the read and reread condition. So in the first condition, the participants were simply asked to read the material, and then they were asked to read it again in order for them to master the chapter or the material that they were reading. In the second condition, we have the read and answer questions condition. So in this condition, the students were asked to read a passage, and then they were asked to answer the chapter test. And in the third condition, after reading the, the chapter, they were asked to create their own questions as a form of, as a review strategy. So in this, in this analysis, our, our goal is to determine if there are significant differences in the exam scores or the quiz scores, depending on the condition of the participants, All right? So as if, if you can remember our previous video, I show you this ANOVA table. And in the ANOVA table, we learned that there are significant differences across conditions with the F value of 7.16, significant at less than 0 0.01. Specifically, when we visualize the results, we learn that those in conditions B and C scored higher compared to those who were assigned to condition A. And the same results were shown in the post hoc analysis. So similar to what was depicted in the figure earlier, we learned that those in condition A differed significantly compared to those in condition B and those in condition C. So once again, how can we say that, how can we say that there are significant differences between the conditions? You can check the post hoc table and then you can see here all the pos all possible comparisons. So for example, we have here condition A versus condition B and you have to check the significance if it's below 0 0.05 to say if there are significant difference between the two conditions. And we also have here condition A versus condition C. So their difference is also significant. And finally, we should also look for condition B versus condition C. So we have it here, condition B versus C. However, their difference is not significant. Okay, and to help us with the interpretation, we have here the descriptive table, which contains the means and the standard deviations of the different groups. And before we begin with our report writing, first let me share to you the post hoc table interpretation guide that I usually share to my students in order for them to easily interpret the results. So I asked them to list all possible combinations. In this case, since we only have three groups, here are all possible combinations. We have A versus B, A versus C, and then finally B versus C. Of course, if you're dealing with more groups, there will be more combinations. If you have group D or group E, by the way, feel free to change the names of the groupings. Instead of A versus B, maybe we can call this read and reread condition versus the read and answer questions condition. But for the interest of time, I'll be only using A versus B, A versus C, and so on. And now let's fill in the table. So we learned earlier that condition A and condition B, the condi conditions A and B, significantly differed from one another. So we, I can put here yes. And also based on the table above, comparing A and C, we also found that their difference is significant since the, the significance value or the p-value is below 0 0.05. So I'm also going to put here yes. And then finally, the last possible combination, B versus C, we learned in the table above that when we compare those in condition B and those in condition C, their difference is not significant. 
because the, the value, the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. So we can put here no. By the way, this table is completely optional. If you're a beginner in ANOVA, then this will be very useful. But if you are already experienced in interpreting ANOVA results, then I guess you can skip this. Well, anyway, at this point, let me show you how uh, my own style of reporting the results, which is also based on how research papers report ANOVA results. Um, and then um, I hope this would help you understand, this would help you express the results in APA format. So let me show it to you. Okay. So first, we can start by reminding the reader what this study is all about. So this study was conducted to determine if there are significant differences in the test scores of the participants, participants, depending on their assignment, depending on their study strategy. The participants were assigned into three conditions. Read and reread, read and answer questions, and read and create questions. Then after you remind the reader what the study is all about, we can start by discussing the ANOVA results based on the F table. So one way between subjects analysis of variance was utilized in this study or was utilized to analyze the data. It was found that there are significant overall differences across conditions or across groups. And once you say, once you state this sentence, let me just correct this. Oh, this is okay. Okay. Once you state this sentence, you can end the statement with the value of uh, with the F statistic. Start with an italicized letter F. And then before you put the equal sign, you have to declare the two degrees of freedom. The first degree of freedom would be the one from between groups, followed by the DF4 within groups. So if we're going to scroll up to our results. For the first DF, we have two. And for the second DF, we have 15. So in the first DF should come from the between groups row, while the second DF should come from the within groups row. Okay, so we have two and 15, and the F value is 7.5. 16. Okay, let me go back to our write-up. So 2 and then 15 and then put an equal sign 7.16 and let me check again the p-value. The p-value is less than point, since it's 0 0.007, it's less than 0 0.01. P, italicize the term P, less than 0 0.01. Okay. And then since there are significant differences across conditions, we have to say that we use post hoc tests to get a better understanding of the results. Post hoc test was utilized to know which conditions are significantly different compared to other conditions. Let me just add something here. Okay. Is or are. All right. Anyway, so after you say that you utilize post hoc tests in your analysis, at this point, you can now discuss the actual results of the post hoc tests. And let us do it this way. So we learned earlier that those in condition A differed significantly compared to those in condition B, and they also differ significantly compared to those in condition C. Well, we can write two sentences to discuss these outcomes or these findings. 
But in my style of writing, if we can if we can combine two ideas into one understandable statement, I think that's much better since it's more concise. So technically, you can say here that those in condition A differ significantly con compared to those in condition B. Then create another sentence for the next comparison. But since we can we can combine this into a single statement, let us do it this way. It was found that those in, so the name of the second condition is, or the name of the first condition is those in the read and reread condition scored significantly lower compared to those in the read and answer questions condition and uh, read and create questions from this. I think that's a good way to say it, right? Anyway, so now um, it's a good practice when reporting results to ap after you after you say the name of the condition or the group, you have to type the means and the standard deviation for that for that group. For example, the mean for the read and reread condition is five, and then its standard dev is 2.19. So we can put here mean of five with a standard deviation of 2.19. Let me just italicize the S. All right. And then let's do the same for the for the two con for the remaining two conditions so we have the read and answer questions condition so their mean is 9 with a standard of 2.61 all right 9 2.61 and for the last condition their mean is 10 with a standard dev of 2.45 All right, there you go. So all in all, these are the. This is how you should report the the results of one way analysis of variance, particularly between subjects. So let me read it again for you. The study was conducted to determine if there are significant differences in the test scores of the participants depending on their study strategy. The participants were assigned into three conditions: read and reread read and answer questions, and read and create questions. One way between subjects analysis of variance was utilized to analyze the data. It was found that there are significant, there are significant overall differences across conditions with the F statistic here. Post hoc tests were utilized to know which condition is or are significantly different compared to other conditions. It was found that those in the read and reread condition scored significantly lower compared to those in the read and answer questions condition and the read and create questions condition. And that's how you report the results of one-way analysis of variance. I hope this video helped you a lot. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.